there are only a few countries in the world where they speak English, United mm. States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the UK, Malta, and the Republic of Ireland. There's a lot of information about these big countries out there, but not a lot of people know you can find jobs with visa sponsorship in the Republic of Ireland. And what's best is that you can move with your family, you can move with your dependents, you can move with your cat, dog, goat, everybody to the Republic of Ireland. This video is for you. Hello folks, you're welcome. This is your one and only Waka Waka Doctor. Always bring you the best gist when it comes to travel and migration. You know how we did on this channel. All we do is share information that has to do with living, working, moving, traveling abroad. If this is the first time of you coming across my channel, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. For those who always come in and send me reviews, I want to say thank you very much. I get them every week. Two quick things that I like to pass across. Number one, I'm not on Telegram or WhatsApp. So if you do find anybody in the comments saying that you should reach them on Telegram or WhatsApp, it is not me. Number two is that a while ago, I wrote a book, a book titled Move Abroad by Force. The idea behind this book is to be able to help you do the travel process on your own without the use of any agent. If you want to acquire this book, just check the description box of this video and you'll be able to get the book. If you're also looking for a way to contact me, check the description box of this video and you'll be able to reach out to me. Okay, let's get to the gist of the matter. It's island time. And as always, I've got someone with a beautiful smile who lives in Ireland to come share with you. All right. Um, thanks for coming on to my show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Do you want to introduce yourself to my community? Yes. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. My name is Gloria, or you could call me Bria. Okay, so I am a Nigerian girl living in Ireland. I have been here for almost five years now. I think September will make it five years. And I also have like my own YouTube channel as well called Bria Sticks. So I think that's like a very short <laughs> brief introduction about me introduction thank you very much how long did you say you've lived in ireland five years it will be five years in september it's like four oh. years now so you are warming up for the, <laughs> you are warming up for the passports fantastic fantastic <laughs> now one of the issues that has you know been in the news and everybody talks about or why they don't really like ireland is this issue with dependence um ireland doesn't allow you move with dependence straight away uh, but now there's a way to move with dependents and they can even work. You know, that's yeah. fascinating that allows them work. Can you talk to us briefly about this? Yes. Yeah, so in previous times, okay, you couldn't move with your dependents. So let's say you're coming as a student, you cannot move with your dependents, except you're coming as a PhD student, okay? But then if you're coming under, like, if your spouse is under a work visa, and let's say critical skills and permit permits, they can actually come to Ireland and they can work but if we're under the general employment permit you couldn't work like your spouse could not work if they came here to ireland they will give them the stamp three visa stamp three visa is just a spouse visa it doesn't allow you to work it doesn't allow you to start a business or do anything but like i think a few weeks ago like two weeks ago actually they revised that particular law and they actually changed it and said you know what after if you're coming under general employment permit critical skills whatever it is that you're coming as as long as you're a dependent, the visa stamp has changed. So now you're going to be getting a stamp 1G, which allows you to work and not just allows you to work. So if you get like your stamp 1G for five years and you renew it for those five years, you are also now in the process of applying for citizenship and also becoming like, you know, a permanent resident in the country after five years to get your like stamp four. Before that wasn't the case. We're just going to be stuck to being like a dependent, like under dependency visa. We'll just, long just, as. we'll just be stuck like glue. One exactly. You're just here for like company. You're not here to work. You're not here to add anything to the government, nothing. But like recently now, that has changed. Dependents are now allowed to work. They're allowed to also, you know, apply for citizenship after five years. Wow. So that's like really good. Oh, that's very, very good. I lived in Ireland for a while myself, and I know how tough island immigration yeah. can be. So this is this is an amazing one. Let's talk about job opportunities in Ireland with visa sponsorship. People yeah. with roles in Ireland that come with visa sponsorship. Talk to us about some of these roles. So actually, job opportunities in Ireland are actually there. I think the sponsorship one over the, like in recent times, has kind of gotten a bit dicey. 
But that's just hearsay because according to statistics, when I was reading the newspaper like last few weeks, there was this um, statistics that they came up with about the amount of permits that they have given to foreigners for just last year. And for just last year, it doubled what it used to be like in the previous year. So that's to tell you that they are actually still giving permits to foreigners. People are actually still coming from abroad into the country to actually work. For job opportunities, there are job opportunities. Don't let anybody lie to you. It can be hard. It can be difficult to get, but there are. I have like a couple of friends. And actually, if you target all these like big four companies like Deloitte, um, PwC, KPMG, all of them, I have a good number of people that have actually come from Nigeria. Nigeria, like... And they sponsored them over here. Like they, they didn't pick people that are in Ireland. They went all the way. So, to so Deloitte, that. KPMG, Deloitte, KPMG, PwC, those big companies, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, they are the ones that would really bring people in from abroad. Mm -hmm. Except like you want to go into um companies like maybe like you want to do healthcare. You know those ones are like it's different. The process is different. But if you're into um so for job opportunities, there are different sectors that are like very needed in this country like if you have them like you know and you put your cv right you're on the verge of getting into the country so project managers has become like a big one like in recent times even finance as well engineering accounting nursing medicine i know for nursing and medicine there's a different kind of process you have to go through you have to write a certain exam you have to be into the the Irish board for nursing and Irish board for doctors before you're able to like get a job. But for all those other ones like finance, technology, consulting, you know, all these big companies, sometimes if you even target smaller companies, like the small companies as well, mid-sized companies are actually doing like the main bringing as well as the big companies, but they are not known. So people think that maybe if I just check um, the website and check LinkedIn or check Indeed or check Irish jobs and I don't see like the big companies, you know, looking for roles that means Ireland is not Ireland doesn't have jobs so Ireland is not looking for people my advice would be like there are job opportunities just answer this question you just have to target the right companies you just have to do your own research and also as as much as you're targeting big companies okay try to target small companies and another tip will also be like stop trying to come to Dublin Dublin is the capital yes but there are other everybody wants there. Dublin everybody wants I don't there know why there are like there are 20 counties, other 20 counties. counties. Well. And those counties are actually looking for people much more than Dublin. Dublin is a bit saturated. But Lee, it's a capital. Limerick. Yes, there's, there's Limerick, there's Clare, there's Carlo, there's Meath, there's Kildare, Letterkenny, Galway, Waterford. Like, there are a lot of them. If people actually target their search into all those other counties, maybe we help their search that their process like easier and faster, you know, than just focusing on only the companies in Dublin. But just to answer your question, there are actually job opportunities here in the country. You just have to be in the right niche. Like right. right? you have to be in the in the right um sector. Construction is a big one, project management, finance, engineering, accounting, you know, all this um business kind of technology, IT, IT is a very, very, very big one because they say Ireland is like the IT hub of Europe. So there are lots of like, you know, tech companies in this place that are also recruiting. But to be fair, there are actually job opportunities here. You just have to tailor your research right. Like tailor your research right. Do it right. Is there a special process that people have to follow, you know, to get these roles that you've talked about? To be fair, there is no like special process because from people that have come in, like I was even speaking to a friend of recent that actually came in from Nigeria. He came in to Deloitte as well. Like, I'm just like, the people in Ireland, did they see us? <laughs> they didn't see us. They went to, to Nigeria, but it's actually fair and good. So he just said to me what he did was just, you know, your CV and not just your CV. It's not just about you just applying to job. It's one thing to apply to job. It's another thing to like, if you're if you're if you're longing for something, if you're desperate for something, you can tell. You mm. follow up with these recruiters, you know, don't just put an application and then say, okay, you're waiting for them to reject you or not. Sometimes, like reach out to recruiters, the people recruiting for that role on LinkedIn, talk to them personally, like also send cold emails. Cold emails surprisingly actually work. If you're sending cold emails, like maybe like the CEO of the company or like top top people. Don't send code emails to HR. Sometimes they won't. HR is not like the best person for code emails. It's like for top top people. So if you're doing things like code emails, speaking to these recruiters, like not just sending your application and leaving it there, like following up with it, explaining to them on LinkedIn or or via email why you're 
good candidate. Sometimes it's audacity that gets you into that mm. role. It's not mm. just about like your your skills and your yeah. experience and your CV. Sometimes be shameless. Just put yourself out yeah. there as much as you can. Yeah. yeah. So for people that have actually come here, those are the kind of the additional tips that they have done. You know, aside from just putting in their CV, putting in their cover letter, these other tips, you know, have actually pushed them in Fantastic. the front line to be able to get that job. Now, another question is that a lot of people want to know, what is the pathway to permanent residency and citizenship in Ireland? So I think it's pretty much straightforward. So if you're here under a work visa, if you get the critical skills and um, implement permits, you only just need two years. Sometimes it's like just one year and eight months. Under one year, eight months or nine months, you can actually put in the application, like 20 months already. You don't have to wait for 24 months to be able to put in your application and you get your stamp for. If you're under the general employment permit, so that's like normal roles, like maybe like healthcare, like um, admin roles, not all admin roles, but some basic like operations coordinator, you know, risk analysts, all these kind of roles. If you get jobs under them, it's under general employment permits and you only need like five years. I know five years is a lot, but time flies at the same time, okay? But you need five years. After you have done five years in the country, then you cannot apply for your stamp four. If you're under, if you're a researcher in the country and you're under like a hosting agreement, so let's say like a school is sponsoring you or an institution is sponsoring you as a researcher, you also only need just two years as well and then you get like your stamp four if you're here as a dependent like a spouse visa before you didn't you couldn't apply for citizenship like straight now but now that has changed as long as you get your stamp one g you can now apply for you know visa your sorry your citizenship after five years so it's just two years for critical skills and being a researcher and five years for the rest and that's it oh, right Fantastic. Thank you very much. Now, I need to ask you this because a lot of people, when I make posts on Instagram or on Twitter about Ireland, they, they say, hey, stop making all these posts. We are full in Ireland. There is no attention. <laughs> people are sleeping on the road. Um, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm always like, okay, I've lived in Ireland before. It wasn't yeah. that bad. But maybe things have changed since I left. Mm -hmm. Now, you yeah. are in Ireland. What is mm -hmm. your take about accommodation issues in Ireland? Is it is it is it a big problem? So let me not lie. Accommodation is actually a hassle, but I think that in recent times that has changed. I think now it just depends on can you afford it rather than is there accommodation? Because the the, the they've been building. Like if you are living in this country, you can actually tell like they've been building, like the place I'm even living in currently, before it was just grass. But like right now they've turned it into like apartments and buildings. So there are actually apartments. The question now is, is it affordable? Actually for like people coming in as students or people that are just putting their legs into the country fresh. It, it's not affordable, but they're actually accommodation. They're, they're apartments now. Like previously, like let's say last three years, last four years, it was hard. Like I, I wouldn't take that away from people that say that there are no accommodation. Like it was actually, it got to a point where people were actually having to patch with each other, but nobody was really sleeping under the bridge. That that one, people are just taking it too far. Honestly, nobody was sleeping on the street or under the bridge or anything. But now I would say that it has improved. It has what been. it was before and what it is now, there are two different things. There's a clear difference. People are even seeing it. Everybody can see. It's just now that, can it be affordable? Is yeah. that's the question now that we are asking? So, okay. like right now, you're being for for example, if you're in a two bed apartment, maybe you're sharing with somebody in all these modern apartments now that they are building at least two thousand three hundred for just rent. So wow. you can see that it's really really expensive. If you're staying like on your own, like in a studio apartment or like in a one bed, you'll be paying at least like one two one three one four. How much is the salary? How much are you now going to be removing to pay for rent? Just rent. You're not talking about like bills or other things. And mind you, people say that rent is like waste. Like you're you're wasting the money because it, there's no return on investment there. Like it's not like your mortgage, it's not like your house or anything. So people don't really find it appealing to be paying this amount of money for something that there's no return of investment on. And it's just a place where you want to go and sleep and wake up, that kind of thing. But to Same answer okay. your question. Yeah. 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 All right. Exactly. Thank you yeah. very much. Now you create content on on Ireland a lot, and yeah. you're a YouTuber. How can people watch your videos, and how can people, you know, see you on social media? Um. So my channel name on YouTube is actually Realistics. I think how you put it on the R -I -R -I -A. screen. Yes. R I A. 
apostrophe s and takes yes okay real estate Yes, Rhea Stakes on YouTube. And then on Instagram, it's my name, Gloria underscore memory, and everywhere else, Twitter, TikTok, everywhere else, the same thing. But yeah, that's that's how you can that's contact it. me. So there you go. You can find her on YouTube, Gloria Stakes. And on Instagram, she is Gloria underscore member. Member is with a double R. Double so, R. Yeah, <laughs> with a double R. So... Uh, you can find that look thank you very very much for doing this with me and sharing tips with respect to moving to ireland guys there you go thank you, thank you again in another video another episode it's waka waka doctor and i'm signing out thank you bye <laughs>